just as I turn my camera on, here comes my neighbor's landscaper making noise at my head, vacuuming their lawn. Can y'all hear that? Oh my God. Anyways, last night I did a video talking about generational curses. And here comes the multi million dollar question. Well, why would God allow that? Why would God allow that? Well, it's a fair question since your pastor ain't teaching you. I mean, you're definitely not reading and studying the Bible to understand why God would allow it. I have the answer for you. It's a happy Friday. Good morning, beloved. Please be sure to subscribe, thumbs up, share this out. Check that video out. I know I, I did a little late. I didn't get a lot of views on it. But check that video out about generational curses and so on and so forth. And I knew this question was coming. So I'm just going to do a quick video on why. Why would God allow uh, generational curses? Why would God allow sicknesses and diseases? Why would God allow bad things to happen to good people? That is one of the most amazing um, discussion in the church world. Like you're a good person. Why uh, bad things are happening to you? So thank you for your love. This morning, I don't know how many of you know, but I do have the book bought the Bible in one year, how to read your Bible in one year. For those of you who want to read the Bible in one year, it's available on Amazon. I haven't talked about it much, but uh, now that we're talking about biblical stuff, uh, check that book out here. Go check that book out for me, how to read your Bible in one year. So if you want to read your Bible in one year, that's the book you get. I have a plan. It's every day. Today is August the 11th. If you want to just flip to August 11th, the reading for the day is there. And then I also have, um, the journal. If you want to go ahead and write down your thoughts or what you have learned, uh, so on and so forth. That's there also, and I don't have it up here. And then I'm doing a how to study your Bible in one year because a lot of people, you go to church, especially if you go to these little churches, you shout, you fall out, you don't know nothing, you don't learn anything. And so, you know, when I come up here and teach about and tell you, oh, the devil have rights to you, to the baby, he's going to get rights to the baby because you don't understand the church is not teaching um, these things. Frankly, I think the church should stop the shouting and sit on down and teach. Uh, most people do not go to Sunday school Bible studies. Everybody come Sunday morning and their Sunday best to shout. I taught Sunday school and Bible study for years. I mean, maybe 20 years. And it was two or three people in Bible study and one person in, <laughs> in Sunday school. And that's where the real teaching takes place. Okay. So thank you for your love and support. Be sure to check those video, that video out for me about generational curses and how to break generational curses. So one of the questions that we get, we get, I get, I knew it was coming is, well, why would God allow it? God allows generational curses. Let me just do a recap. Generation curse is a spirit or curse or a sickness that goes from generation to generation to generation to generation. For example, I know a family, everybody have diabetes. Everybody. And I'm talking, I know four, let's see, grandma, mama, daughter, four generation. Because one of the girls just had a little girl and she's, she's like five maybe a little older, and was just diagnosed with diabetes. It's a curse, right? From generation to generation to generation. So what happened is when a baby is released in the atmosphere, I also use the example of my husband's family, his father's family. Everybody wear glasses. And so we have pictures over there of my husband being two and three with glasses. Everybody in his so my husband, uh, he's one of four siblings. The daddy wear glasses. The older brother wore glasses. The sister wear glasses. My husband wear glasses. And the baby brother wear glasses. The mother, she didn't. She was funny. And the, the, the ones that have kids, their kids wear glasses. So when I met my husband, I don't mind. I don't mind dating a man with glasses. Y'all see my husband, child. He got the cutest glasses ever. 
you can't really see them because you know those are real expensive one. They don't, you know, you can't even tell. You can't even tell. He got glasses on. But when I was pregnant, I st I took authority over. Before I got pregnant, I took authority over bad eyes. So what happened is, when a child is released in the physical. What does that mean? Everybody who's going to be on earth is already created. God already know he ain't making no new people. <laughs> We're all there waiting to be manifested in the spirit. So when the sperm, my husband's sperm is released to hit my seed and the child is created. This is why Jeremiah say, you knew me from the moment I was in my mother's womb. Before I was in my mama's womb, you knew me. Yeah, because everybody's already created. Even the ones you flush down the toilet. God had a destiny for them too. So the baby is in the is in is in the is in the spiritual realm. For the child to manifest in the physical, there are demons, sicknesses diseases standing in line the devil he's a good note taker let me tell you don't play with the devil honey you think you know that bible oh he know it better than you the bible says so and he's taking notes and so before the baby manifest in the physical manifest in the physical is the seed hit the seed hit the egg the devil says hold up I got rights to that baby. The rights he has to the baby are the things that's been in the bloodline. That's been coming down, passing down, passing down, passing down, passing down. He says, I got rights to that baby. And God, oh God, okay, you got rights to him. There's nothing he can do. God can do because you didn't give God authority. So let's use Lou Michael. Everybody wear glasses. All the kids wear glasses. All the of the daddy, they all wear glasses. They just had a family reunion. Everybody got glasses on. They asking where Lou Michael glasses. He ain't got none. <laughs> we send the school pictures. Did he take his glasses off? No, he don't wear glasses. Did you take it to the eye doctor? Yes, twenty twenty. When Lou Michael. Was getting to manifest in the physical, right? The sperm hit the egg. The devil said, I got rights to that boy. Eyes. God says, No, you don't. Go back and read in, in Revelation where the Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He stand before God morning, noon, and night, accusing the brethren. That's what that means. He is saying, I got rights to little Michael. Eyes. That's, I've been in that family for generations. I have rights for him, for his eyes. God says, no, you don't. Why no, you don't? Because me and Big Mike took authority over it. I bind in the name of Jesus, bad eyes. I take authority over you. I root you out. I render you ineffective and inoperative in Mike, Luda Michael's eyes, in his body, in his mind, soul, and spirit. You are ineffective. You will not function in his eyes. He will not have bad eyes. Luda Michael has 20-20 vision like me and Lexi. That's our cloud flex in the house. I got 20-20 vision. I tell him every day, he said, Mommy, I got good eyes. Yes, you do. You got good eyes. And his daddy reminded you got good eyes. Yes, you do. So if you don't take authority over it, it's going to go to the next generation, just like that girl. Little girl. Little girl. Was just like, what? Five, she's six. Diabetes already? But her cousin was 12. So nobody has taken authority over it. And let me explain. You can't take authority over it unless you're born again. No, you can't. You must be born again in order to take authority. 
So why would God allow this? Because he's a God of laws. What do I mean by God of laws? Let's flip on back to the book of Genesis. God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The moon, the star, the sun, the trees, the water, the elf, the sh shark, everybody. God created man in his vision and gave him dominion over the earth. He said, watch over it, tend to it, protect it. You have dominion over the earth, over the fish, over the animals, over the trees, over the water. The only person that God did not give Adam dominion over is each other people. Well, Dusty Adam gave his power and his rights to the devil. People want to blame Eve. No, God told Adam to teach Eve. He didn't teach her. That's why she was over there talking to the serpent. And how was you over there talking to the serpent? The Bible said Adam was right there. Adam was the dusty. He's the first dusty. He's the first foolish man. Because the serpent is talking to your woman and you don't step up and say, oh, oh, oh. And when the devil convinced Eve to eat the fruit, the Bible says Adam was right there and her husband with, was with her. So he stood there and watched her eat the fruit. Shout out to Sela channel. Sela said, I think Adam wanted to know what would happen if they eat the fruit. And so when Eve ate the fruit and nothing happened, he, she gave it to him. You know why nothing happened when Eve ate the fruit? God did not give Eve the charge. God gave Adam the charge. So when Adam saw nothing happen with Eve, he said, okay, <gasps> soon as his teeth penetrated the fruit, everything changed. Everything changed. And the Bible says, when Adam bit the fruit, their eyes were open. So Adam, a man, gave the devil his power, his authority, and all his rights. The fall of man. My sister-in-law made this for me. Isn't it pretty? This is for Lexi. Man fell. You have to realize that over there was Adam, over here was God, and God was holding up grace. Because remember, God had already kicked the serpent out of heaven. So God was protecting Adam. And God told Adam, don't eat up the fruit. The day you do, you will die. And Adam ate, and man fell. So when man fell... That opened us up to all the stuff we're seeing now. Sickness, disease, hate, poverty. You see some of these serial killers. They were killing animals at seven. That's not normal. That's a curse. How how you think a five or six or seven year old is animal? That is a demonic spirit that's in the bloodline. That's not normal. But if it's in the bloodline and nobody, a born again believer, for example, my husband and I taking authority over the eyes. If we didn't do it, Lou Michael would be going down with Big Mike to get glasses too. So if you do not take authority in the name of Jesus Christ and stop just like I did in my family, my father's side of the family, it's learning disability. I always knew I had uncles that couldn't read, couldn't write. So that spirit transferred down to Lexi. And it wasn't until 
I started going to God about well, what, what, what in the world? You, uh, you know, I had her at 16. I'm a single mom. I'm, I'm homeless. Then I got this to deal with. And the Lord began to show to me, you never took authority. You need to take authority. So from my bloodline, Lexi and Michael, none of my ch grandchildren or children, great grandchildren, da, 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 will ever have to deal with learning disability again. But every family needs to take, a, every generation needs to take authority. So a lot of stuff you see that's happening and you say, why would God allow, why God ain't stepping? He can't. He doesn't have authority. That's why because God is in control of the earth. No, he's not. You are. And those demons, they know what they have authority to. In the book of Psalms, it talks about the angels of the Lord hearken to the word of God. Our angels are on the unemployment line because we're not speaking God's word. Angels, our angels, they only move when we speak God's word. <laughs> I love you to death. That's not God's word. Well, the Bible says, I shall live and not die. <clears throat> what Deuteronomy says, I'm blessed going, blessed coming, blessing the city, blessing the fields. Wherever I go, I'm blessed. Wherever my children go, they have favor. Everybody love my kids. The teachers love them. They got favor with God and men. My kids never sick, not sick. And me and little Michael, we've been struggling with allergies. I've been praying and believing God. Taking authority over it. Confessing our healing in Jesus' name. Because what the enemy does, he comes and he attacks. Ephesians talk about fiery darts. He throws stuff at you. He throws sickness. He throws asthma. He throws allergies. He throws... Poverty, alcoholism, holiness, holiness. <laughs> Daddy was a rolling stone. He throw all these spirits at you, these fiery darts. This is why, one of the reasons we need God. This is why we need to pray. This is why we seek God. This is why we confess God's word. This is why we submit to God. Your money is messed up. You haven't submitted it to God. Your dingling is is ruling you. You haven't submitted it to God. Your kitty can't have you out of control. You haven't submitted it to God. If you don't submit it to God, God does not have any power and authority to work in your life. You have to give Him the right. So all this stuff that's happening, it was like, where's God? God's in control. Why is that? He God's sitting up there on his throne. He waiting. Come on, baby. Take authority. He's just sitting there. He can't do nothing. Because God only moves in our life when we give him authority. God move in our finances when we give him authority. I don't like to lose the, I don't care if it's a dollar. I am quick to open the Bible and say, God, you said you will open up wisdom and put my blessing. I will not have room enough to receive. You would rebuke the devourer for my sake. I lost a dollar. <laughs> and how do you know what's in your family? What's in your family? Look at you. What's wrong with you? Some people have a mean spirit. My brother, mean. Mean like a snake. I mean, mean.
There's a difference between frugal and cheap. You won't spend money buying lunch for you, but you want to eat some of my lunch. No, ma'am, you're mean and cheap. Because we work at the same place and we get the same pay, just about. Everybody pay is different. Our, our, your grow, our, everybody base income is the same, but different people have different stuff coming out. You get more than me because you ain't taking out for no 401k. You not, you too cheap. <clears throat> you too cheap to say, to, to have them take out four or $500 a month a pay to, for your 401k to plan for your future. So you get more money than me, but you don't want to buy lunch with your money. You want to eat some of my lunch. No, that is cheap and mean and stingy. And that's why people is broke. You don't got no money. So you got to plant seeds. You too, you too cheap to plant seeds because if you don't plant no seeds, you can't get a harvest. Remember back in the 90s, uh, Pastor Thompson Money, come to me now. A lot of people, they, they miss them. I got hold of that thing. Money, come to me now, honey. Money's looking for me, running me. Oh, I got about five people that owe me money. <clears throat> They're going to be looking for me today to give me money. And if they don't give it to me today, next week's pay. I got about five people that what? They're looking for me. Money is looking for me, running me over, trying to get in my pocketbook. I got so much money, my bank account can't hold it. See the difference between me talking about I ain't got no money? Uh-uh, I got it. It's, it's knocking my on my door. It's in my mailbox. It's trying to find me. So when you give God authority in your life, he can move in your life. But when you don't give God authority in your life, and then there's, there's some things, bad things that happen to people. Though some of those things we'll never understand until we get to heaven. I know a lady, I don't know her personal, I heard of a lady right here that lost all three of her son to gun violence. <clears throat> That's a demonic spirit. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The enemy came to kill her son, steals her son, destroy all three of her boys. Gang violence. No one, you like you don't, you can't live. Three, no man, that's a demonic spirit that came to kill that woman's boys. Cause nobody change, right? You're still in the street. You're still with the gangs. You're still doing all of that, and nobody took authority over it. And this is another reason why I don't let my kids go nowhere, other than school. My kids don't leave my eyes, even at church. In Sunday school, I'm sitting right there. Either I'm sitting or daddy is sitting, especially little Michael, because he don't know. Lexi will know. Lexi knows the word. She was raised, I raised up in the church with me and stayed with me. But little Michael, he's still learning. So even Sunday school and Bible study, so, uh, either me or Mike is sitting right there in the corner. I'm listening. Because I don't, I, 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 I'm not about to let you plant some seed in my son's life that I can't, that I'm not going to know about. So I don't let my kids go nowhere. I don't leave my kids. My kids don't go to babysitters. If they don't, if they're not in school, if we don't do sleepovers. We ain't going over nobody's house to watch a TV. You got TV here, watch your own TV. Because the devil goes about as a roaring lion. Not in line, as a seeking whom he may devour. And he might get a pinky in, then his two fingers, the next thing you know, his whole body is in. You can't give him no place in your life. And a lot of you, if God is not moving in your life, you need to give him authority to move in your life. The enemy is moving in your life because he has authority to move in your life. I got to go, y'all. I love you. Let me know what you think. Watch that other video I did. I didn't want this video to be look too, too long, but I just want you to know God don't allow Why? Why would God allow it? Because he's a God of laws. If the devil has rights to you, there's nothing God can do. I love you. Let me know what you think. Bye.